Hey everyone, welcome back to the Foodie Dietitian channel. My name is Carmen and I'm a dietitian from Sydney, Australia. And I hope everyone had a really nice week. So earlier this week, I uploaded part one to my dietary fats video. It contains all the information you need to know about uh, how fats are uh, digested and processed in our bodies and how they're carried around. Um, and then also we talked about all the different kinds of fats, the good fats and the bad fats. And I'll have that video up in the cards if you haven't watched that already. But today we're going to be talking about the recommendations and how we can actually put all that information into practice. Now, all of these recommendations are based off of the Heart Foundation position statement and guidelines. And all of these are based off of really high quality evidence, studies that have been done over, over many, many years, these long-term cohort studies with thousands of people um, and then you know they also make this evidence stronger by doing a meta-analysis and review of all these different studies and combining them to, to actually see if the the results are homogenous amongst all of these different studies that are done over the years so uh, the the evidence here is high quality it is strong um, but it's also still changing all the time um, and that's just the nature of science. Uh, new studies come out and then they find that, oh, you know, maybe it doesn't actually have this effect that we thought it did. But anyhow, I'm using the latest guidelines that were published last year. So I hope you guys find this video helpful. And if you have any other questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. And also let me know any other videos that you want me to make in the future. But let's dive into the rest of the video. Okay, so we're going to finish up with recommendations because I have gone on all about these fats, but now what, what do you guys actually need to do? So overwhelmingly, the evidence shows that in order to prevent ourselves from getting sick, from getting heart disease um, and you know other associated um, health problems, it is important that we replace saturated fats with our polyunsaturated and our monounsaturated fatty acids so take those out add more of these in you know what i mean so that sounds simple enough but how do we actually put that into practice so if we can limit our energy from saturated fats to less than 10 percent we're already trying to keep our saturated fats consumption down right so no more than 10 percent of our energy should come from saturated fat so how do we actually put this all into practice well the first thing we can do is uh, limit our red meat consumption and um, just our our meat consumption in general um, but typically we'd say you know limit your red meat to one to two times a week and try to trim the fat off your meat before you cook it because that's um, probably the best way that we can get rid of as much as that fat as possible and I know we all love our marbled steak. You know, have those um, occasionally. If you want to regularly have steak, then you want to pick a cut of steak that is leaner, such as rump steak, because rump tends to be sort of leaner throughout, and then you've just got this sort of level, uh, this layer of fat on the outside that you can just easily trim off. Choose uh, leaner cuts of pork as well. So instead of your pork belly, choose a pork chop and trim the fat off the pork chop. Uh, and also, if you're going to go with mince, try to go with the extra lean mince because it just naturally has less fat in it anyway. And so you don't have to worry about trying to drain the fat off when you're cooking it. So yeah, go with the extra lean mince, about 5% fat uh, mince is best. So uh, moving on, um, talking about omega-3. So th these are the recommendations by the Heart Foundation is to have 250 to 500 milligrams a day of EPA and DHA combined. And so that's, that's really through us getting our oily fish. So this is about one to two times a week. I'm running out of space here, sorry guys. And it's about 150 gram to 200 gram serve at a time. Uh, to get to get sort of this amount so I need to get one gram of ALA a day and so remember these were our uh, short chain omega-3s and these are our long chain omega-3s and we get these from nuts and seeds so you know having a serve of nuts every day would be would be advisable so one serve would be about 30 grams and um, you can also do like a tablespoon of chia in your smoothies or flax seeds in your smoothies or over your your oatmeal 
Um, so that could be another way of getting it. Now, uh, the fourth thing I want to talk about is um, to sort of limit our omega-6 fatty acids. Now, I, I did say omega-6 was an essential fatty acid. The research has shown that our omega-3 to omega-6 ratio is a little bit off. Um, because we're having so much vegetable oil. So yeah, limit your oil consumption. Um, and the reason why omega-6 isn't as good as omega-3 is because omega-3s are actually anti-inflammatory. And the, the research has shown that um, if we have a prolonged state of inflammation in our bodies, that's not a good thing because that, that can lead to... Um, chronic diseases down the line such as diabetes and even in some cases it would just increase our risk of getting cancer so being in a constant inflammatory state um, isn't really good for us and we tend to get a lot of inflammation um, in our body not you know only in you in know infection and when we're sick but also through our diet so a really poor diet that's full of highly processed foods and like processed meat and too much red meat um, has been shown to cause inflammation in our bodies. So um, having omega-3s can sort of mitigate that inflammatory response. But um, omega-6s are actually found to be pro-inflammatory. And so that's why we want to, um, even though it is an essential fatty acid, we want to limit it uh, as much as we can and it is more important to get more of the omega-3s than omega-6, but currently it's sort of the other way around, just because of how easy it is to overconsume our vegetable oils. Okay, and then the final recommendation here is to get less of 1% of our energy from trans fat. So like I said earlier, if we're already trying to limit our saturated fats from our meat consumption, um, and we're avoiding those highly processed pastries and um, uh, cakes and things like that, then we're probably likely not to really go over in our trans fats. Now, um, the last thing I wanted to talk about is supplementation because I know there's probably always going to be someone who's asking, you know, is it necessary to take fish oil supplementations? Um, Honestly, you can do whatever you want in terms of taking fish oil. It probably won't harm you if you take like 1000 milligrams a day. But the thing is, we probably wouldn't really recommend it um, to someone who's healthy, you know, the general population who's healthy and fit. Um, there is no real need to go and run out and get yourself a fish oil supplement. So we usually really only uh, recommend and um, almost like prescribe it to people if they have a history of heart disease. So if they have chronic heart failure or um, otherwise if they have elevated triglycerides and then we would recommend about 4,000 4, to 5,000 milligrams of DHA and EPA a day. But you know with these sort of cases I would recommend you to consult your GP, consult your doctor anyway, because they will um, actually advise you on how much to have and or see a dietitian if you can, because they will be able to give you a lot more specialized advice in regards to whatever uh, health issues you also have. Now, um, the other thing that I wanted to address was about lowering cholesterol, because a lot of people, especially when we got, get to older age, um, uh, you know, it might be a genetic, genetic thing, it might be um, due to poor diet or, you know, as a result of smoking. A lot of people do have elevated levels of blood cholesterol as we get older, um, especially with those high LDL cholesterol levels that, um, you know, we, we say aren't the best for us to have. So if you do have high blood cholesterol, we do recommend a number of things that you can do. So first and foremost is to limit our saturated fats. And this is sort of the same um, recommendation we give to anybody who's healthy as well. You know, try to limit as much saturated fat as possible. But other things that you can do is you can uh, have two to three grams of phytosterols a day. But they're kind of naturally occurring um, molecules, organic molecules that are found in plants. And they have been shown to reduce our blood cholesterol, in particular our LDL cholesterol, by actually limiting the absorption of cholesterol in our gut. So um, there are a number of products out there on the market that have 
been fortified with these plant sterols. The most important thing I have to say is that you really need to hit that two to three gram dose for it to be effective. And as for someone who's healthy, who, someone who doesn't have a, a, a cholesterol issue, I, I wouldn't recommend you go run out and get these uh, products because they're, they tend to be a little bit more expensive than uh, other products. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't suggest you go and go out and, and waste your money on it. And then as as with any kind of recommendation and, and dietitians are always harping on about this and uh, probably the most important thing is to have a healthy balanced diet. You know, lots of fruit and veg, go for whole grains when possible and get in our, our oily fish um, one to two times a week. So like I said, we have our salmon, tuna, mackerel, uh, anchovies, sardines uh, probably the most common uh, types of oily fish that we have and then finally i wanted to talk about type 2 diabetes as well um, because there has been uh, evidence to show that although eating eggs isn't going to really have that much impact on our blood cholesterol levels overall it has been shown in in patients with pre-existing type 2 diabetes that eating too many eggs could increase the risk of cardiovascular disease. For that reason, in people um, that do have type 2 diabetes, we would recommend to limit your eggs to seven a week. So that's really all I have to say about dietary fats. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you are still confused about anything or if you wanted more examples or um, recommendations, feel free to leave um, your comments down below and I'll do my best to answer your questions. But like always, if you do have any uh, sort of um, health issues that you then you want to address, I couldn't recommend more for you to um, get a referral to see a dietitian because um, then we can do a, a more thorough assessment on, on your diet and um, of any sort of other pre-existing health conditions you have and, and we can really do our best to use the best evidence to give you um, the, the advice that is actually effective. So so all the information that I've put out here in this video is just general healthy eating advice. Yeah, other than that, um, you know, I hope you guys found this useful. All right, guys, so there we go. That was our recommendations and it also finishes off the dietary fat series. Now, if you have any other ideas, any other topics that you want me to cover that are um, similar to this, let me know down below and I will definitely make them for you. I hope everybody has a really good week ahead and I will see you all next time. Bye.